So let's start with food. That's where you started. And I saw one of the uh, talks I think you uh, had, or maybe it was on your website, where you talked about glyphosate, which is one of the main ingredients in Roundup. Um, relatively speaking, that hasn't been around too long. I mean, a few decades, a generation or two. But do we know how that might affect the body as we get into the third and fourth generations of this being prevalent in our society? The research that's coming out is very disturbing on glyphosate. Um, there really aren't human studies to look at this. So here, our food and water supply is permeated with glyphosate. Pretty much everybody I check has at least some level of glyphosate, and then it's to an extreme. Even in people that think that they're eating mostly glyphosate-free foods, so mostly eating organic. So what's happening is the studies in insects and in animals are showing significant impact on subsequent generations of, of um, the insects and the animals. And so that, you know, when in studies we have to extract that to humans because of course we're not going to give people glyphosate on purpose when we know it's a carcinogen, it disrupts the microbiome, and then it looks like it's causing possible DNA and hormone hormonal damage in subsequent generations. It's very, very concerning. And of course, then there's the court cases that are coming out that show that um, Monsanto did not fully disclose the information that they had on, on it being a carcinogen. So um, there's lots of people that are studying this now. It's uh, every time I go to, to PubMed, which is where uh, a lot of the research articles are listed, there's you know, three, five, ten uh, articles coming out every few months. So we're going to have a much better understanding of this because finally there are studies getting done. But it leads to, I mean, we have we have a major issue in our country and in the world where the policy has been to do very minimal studies on pesticides, insecticides, and chemicals without really proving what the impact is going to be on the current generation as far and future generations and I think a lot of us we think you know we think oh the government's protecting us of course they're not going to be spraying this all around or putting this into our food supply or into our, our products if it's a problem but there's story after story after story with things like lead and mercury and and other and DDT um, you know one of the things that just came out last week is that they, um, with the ice melt in Alaska, that um, the salmon is is um, having very high levels of these old and uh, pollutants, the um, pesticides, in the fish. So now, you know, we we thought, well, Alaskan salmon is the best fish that we can get because it's from the purest sor sources, but that's changing as well. So. We've got to have a different policy before we okay putting vast amounts of these chemicals and pesticides into our environment without knowing what the implication is. And then you look at the whole DDT story where it's been illegal for decades yeah. and it's, it's rising up to become, uh, I'm also seeing that the levels of the DDT in some patients. So it sticks around for such a long, long time and continues to cause uh, these significant risks. The other thing that's so important is to really look at when we put multiple chemicals together. So, um, you know, one-tenth the amount of lead and one-tenth the amount of mercury is what would cause a problem, um, when, you know, when you put them together. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, it, yeah. it's, it's, and it's not just even those two, it's thousands of things that we're getting exposed to daily and, and over a lifetime.